Hello everyone, this is Leah Whitehorse and in this recording I'm going to be talking about the astrology of July 2024. So we do have another busy month coming up and we start the month with Neptune. So Neptune has been making quite a splash recently because it's been hanging out on that final degree of Pisces, the last degree of the Zodiac. And now on the 2nd of July, Neptune will station retrograde. So this is the beginning of the yearly retrograde of Neptune and it will back up to 27 degrees and 7 minutes of Pisces and the retrograde will take us all the way to the 9th of December. That is the date that Neptune will station direct. So we have five months of this internalized process as any retrograde is. And in retrograde motion, what Neptune is doing is he is kind of pulling away the veil. I often use the image of the tide going out, the sea is pulling away from the beach. And finally, we can see all the seashells and the starfish and they are there laid out on the beach. We can see everything clearly because in forward motion, Neptune is helping us to build dreams. But sometimes, we can become very lost in the illusions of Neptune and we can delude ourselves. So when Neptune is in retrograde motion, all of that delusion dissipates, all of the illusion dissipates so we can truly see what's actually available to us and whether the dream that we are working on is in fact realistic, whether it can be brought out into the world, whether it can manifest, or whether it is just simply a dream. And also whilst Neptune is in retrograde motion, we might be questioning our faith, our beliefs, what is meaningful to us. These kinds of issues also come up with Neptune retrograde. Also on the 2nd of July, this is a busy day, we have the sun squaring the nodal axis. Now I wanted to mention this because with Neptune stationing on that weird and wonderful final degree of Pisces and Neptune has a very strange essence to it as well and station days can be wobbly, this combined with the sun squaring the nodal axis could bring up this feeling that almost like fate is taking over, fate is stepping in in some way. Certainly with a square to the nodes, any square to the nodes is like a, a missed step. And with the sun, often there is this feeling that maybe we have misidentified a purpose or we have aligned ourselves too strongly with a certain um, self-concept, with a certain way of seeing ourselves. Sometimes the sun square to the nodes can also be associated with uh, sort of big weather events or kind of major events that affect the collective in some way. And it is a turning point in our spiritual evolution. So we've got the turning point of the sun squaring the nodes and then Neptune literally stationing, turning tail, going backwards. So there is a lot here about some kind of feeling of fatedness, feeling of spirit stepping in, giving us some sort of guidance here. Now also whilst we have Neptune stationing and the Sun squaring the nodes, we're going to have Mercury moving out of Cancer and into Leo. This is also on the 2nd of July, so there's a lot going on on this date. Now Mercury will go through Leo and enter Virgo, but it is going to station retrograde in Virgo and come back into Leo. So basically we are going to have a longer period of time with Mercury in Leo. Generally speaking, Mercury in Leo, anytime Mercury changes signs, it changes how we are thinking and it also changes what we are thinking about, what we are talking about. 
And Leo is a sign that is a fixed fire sign. So it's very passionate. It's very loyal. It's very fun. It's a sign that's associated with theater and also with royalty. It's very dramatic. So we might speak more emphatically about what we are thinking about, how we present our ideas. We want others to hear us. And that can sometimes in shadow mean that we are less able to hear others. And sometimes too, with the uh, sign Leo being ruled by the sun, it means that we can identify too strongly with our opinions. And so what can happen is if someone disagrees with a, a stance that we take, if someone disagrees with our way of seeing things or even our ideas, then we can take that very personally. So that's just something to watch when Mercury is in Leo. But generally speaking, it can be very good for us speaking up because this is a confident sign and it is encouraging us to use our voice in creative ways. On the 5th of July, Mars is going to form a sextile with Saturn. So Mars is currently traveling through Taurus which means that Mars is not overly happy in this sign, but it can function well because there is a strong determination with Mars in Taurus. We are motivated by seeing tangible results because Taurus is an earth sign. So it wants to bring things into being. We want to see it, smell it, touch it. We want to experience it with all of our senses. In fact, Mars in Taurus can also be quite sensual. So Mars in Taurus motivated by tangible results. We're also motivated to pursue the things that we value, which can also mean that we're wanting to uh, put our energies into making money or increasing our resources in some way, increasing our security. This is what we're fired up about with Mars in Taurus. And now it's connecting with Saturn retrograde in Pisces. This is an interesting connection because when you get Mars and Saturn together, we get the idea of discipline and longevity, the sense that we're building our muscles, we're working out, we're working really hard here. And Saturn retrograde in Pisces is busy doing this inner work, asking us to address these limitations that are stopping us from manifesting our dreams, which is what Saturn in Pisces is all about, giving us the structure that we need to be able to bring something into being. So now we're motivated to push through these internal walls to stop ourselves from being stopped by our own uh, inner saboteur. We're fending it off and instead getting excited about this long-term plan that we can now see ourselves being able to work towards. Now, this is also the date of the new moon in Cancer. So this is when the moon and the sun meet in the sign of Cancer. It's the beginning of the lunar cycle and it's a seed point. So we have the idea of the conscious and the unconscious coming together and we have this new beginning, which is centered around the themes of cancer, which is associated with home, family, domestic life, how we feel deep down. This is a water sign and it's all connected to the past, our childhood, our history. Something is starting here that is going to hopefully allow us to feel more comfortable, to feel safer, to feel emotionally supported. But there is a bit of a challenge coming from Ceres at 14 degrees of Capricorn. The new moon is at 14 degrees and 23 minutes of the sign Cancer. So we've got a very close opposition with Ceres. So that means that we may be feeling some kind of stress or tension between our work life and our home life. And it kind of captures my attention because we are going to have this month a second 
full moon in Capricorn. So it's almost like we're getting a lot of emphasis on work and home and getting that balance right. We had a full moon in Capricorn at the end of June, which was at the beginning of the sign Capricorn. And now we're coming up to the the full moon in Capricorn this month, which will be at the very end of this sign. And right in the midst of it, the new moon where we should be able to make some kind of new start. We're still having this similar tension coming through between the two signs, Cancer and Capricorn. I will be talking much more about this, doing a complete reading on this lunation and all lunations over on my Patreon. The links are below. It's also going to be available for my Substack uh, subscribers as well. We follow the new moon in Cancer with Jupiter forming a sextile to the north node. This is going to be on the 9th of July. So of course, Jupiter is now in Gemini. So we're going through this period of intellectual growth. We are being pushed to expand our ideas, to speak more, talk more, think more. There is a push towards being more adaptable, to be more communicative with Jupiter in Gemini. And with the North Node in Aries, it's encouraging all of us to embrace our individuality, to be more courageous about sort of pushing for what we want in life. Aries is a very brave and pioneering sign. It is associated with kind of taking bold action. And so if we have Jupiter and Gemini in a sextile to the North Node, then we see that there is some kind of opportunity to make things happen via communication, via making some kind of decision. It could even be that we have a piece of information that just drops into place and suddenly it unlocks everything. We see how we can step forward. We see how we can pursue the goal. So this is a really interesting and helpful aspect. On the 10th of July, Pallas will station direct in Scorpio. So Pallas has been retrograde for a good while now. She started off in Sagittarius, went back through into Scorpio. And so she's been kind of looking at internal patterns in Scorpio related to uh, our shared resources, how we connect with one another on a deep level. She's been looking at patterns around our fears very specifically And now she's saying, okay, I've revised the strategy. I've looked at these patterns. I understand this better now, which is interesting with that Jupiter connection to the North Node. I understand things better now. And so now we're going to put this new strategy that I've come up with into practice as she starts to move forwards again so that we can resolve any problems that we have with one another, particularly when it comes to our shared resources. Now, this is followed by Venus entering Leo on the 11th of July. So that kind of makes me smile. It makes me think like we've just sorted out the problem. Who is going to pay for what? How are we going to uh, sort of figure out our income and our expenditure together? How are we going to get closer? How are we going to overcome these fears that are stopping us from really bonding kind of mind, body and soul? So we're doing all this really heavy, intense stuff with uh, Palace. And then Venus skips into Leo and says, okay, enough of this. When it comes to our relationships, enough of this. Let's just have some fun. And Mercury obviously has already been thinking about this because he's recently gone into Leo. So now Venus goes into Leo and says, I want to have some fun when it comes to our time together. When Venus changes sign, she changes how we approach our relationships We could also just say the things that we love as well as the people that we love. It changes how we express happiness. It changes how we approach our money matters. So Venus going into Leo, then we have this bright 
spotlight moment. We are wanting to be seen and heard again. We want that attention, particularly in relationships. Uh, but this is a very generous sign. So we also want to give attention. We're more inclined to treat those that we love as if they are truly special, which obviously can feel really nice. The shadow is that, yes, Venus in Leo can be a bit of a prima donna. If she doesn't get the attention that she's looking for, or someone kind of rejects the attention that she is showering on somebody else. So of course, every placement, every movement always has these shadow expressions. But generally speaking, we are a bit more confident with expressing what is going on in the heart. And that can also translate into art and creativity as well, because this is the sign that is associated with creative self-expression. So, and Venus is associated with aesthetics, things that are appealing, things that look beautiful. So if you are artistically inclined, then this is an ideal time to really use this energy. But also for all of us, we're prompted to approach things in a more creative way from the heart. Trust your heart to create something beautiful that is there to be seen. Now, I mentioned as well that Venus can be associated with money. So with money issues, the sign Leo, again, is more confident more inclined to take a risk. So we are more likely to invest. And we could say that in all ways, we're more likely to take a risk to invest in what we love. Now, that can be really good because sometimes we do need to take risks in life. But however, there can be a tendency to take a bit of a gamble when Venus goes into Leo with money. So just to be conscious of how much you're spending, you know, if you want to uh, play a game of poker or if you want to put a bet on some match that is happening, some football, I think there's football on this summer. So, you know, if you want to take a bet, great, but only spend what you can afford to lose. Now that is extra emphasized because a few days later, Mars is going to conjoin Uranus in Taurus. So this is Venus's sign, the sign that is associated with money and resources. And Mars and Uranus, when those two get together, we can have shocks and surprises. Nothing goes to plan when we have Mars conjunct Uranus. Now, positively, this can encourage brave new action, doing something completely different, unexpected action. And that can help to free up energy or free up resources. So this can be a very electric energy that kind of blasts us free from where we've been quite stuck. But the other way this can go is if, particularly if we're feeling angry and frustrated, this energy can become very wired, very anxious, and we can be very impulsive. And we get this split second action that has wild and predictable results. So this is why we need to be conscious of what is going on around this time and how we're feeling around this time. Also noting that if you are having a transit of Uranus, so in other words, if you have planets or points around 26 degrees of Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, or Aquarius in particular, if you have something there, then this Mars connection to Uranus is an activation. So even if the transit that you're experiencing is going to be a few days later, or a few weeks later, Mars is going to bring that forward. So just to bear this in mind. And so this is for all of us too, that Mars is activating Uranus in Taurus. And we are coming towards the end of Uranus and Taurus. We're not there yet, but Uranus is now traveling these final degrees of this sign. So it's almost like there's a sense of it's getting impatient now for this to be done, that we need these new ways of using our resources. Maybe we're actually finding new resources. We need to change the way we distribute money or the way we earn money. We need to change the way we're farming and using the land. So all of these teachings of Uranus in Taurus are going to be activated 
by Mars forming this conjunction to Uranus. On the 17th of July, I just wanted to point out that we will have the fourth in a series of seven trines between Pluto and Sedna. This one is important because it's the first trine between these two bodies that is going to be in air signs. The first three trines were when Pluto was in Capricorn and Sedna was in Taurus. So this is the first time that they have interacted whilst being in air signs. As we're dealing with two very slow moving bodies, particularly Sedna, who has an incredibly long orbit of around 11,000 years, this is a background trend. But it is important to be aware of this because these two are working together to transform our world, transform our societies, transform humanity through the evolution of consciousness. So the transformation is Pluto, the evolution of consciousness is Sedna. Now coming to a transit that is going to be felt more on a personal level, I'm just going to mention that this is also the date, the 17th of July, when Mercury will go into the shadow zone of the upcoming retrograde period. So this degree 21 degrees 25 minutes of the sign Leo. This is the degree that Mercury will come back to. It will end here when it completes its retrograde cycle. So that just means that now we're in a period of time where we're likely to revisit whatever is coming up around this time, particularly whatever thoughts, whatever decisions, whatever conversations, these are the things that we're going to be coming back to. So just to pay attention to what is occurring around this time. On the 20th of July, Mars is going to form a sextile to Neptune just before it enters Gemini. So Mars sextile Neptune, this is going to involve once again these anoretic degrees. So this is 29 Taurus, 29 Pisces. 29 Taurus sometimes has some associations that are challenging because it's connected to the weeping sisters of the Pleiades. And so it's a degree that we can associate with feeling sad, sorrowful, that it's connected with loss or grief in some way. However, this is a positive, helpful connection. So it kind of feels like we are in a position to overcome our sorrows through transcending Neptune, this earthly experience. We don't want to get too stuck in the fury or the frustration about loss when it comes to what is happening in our material world. Instead, this is expansive energy. It's almost like Neptune is saying life is full of ebb and flow, loss and gain. Sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. If you can accept that, if you can make peace with that, that is going to keep freeing up a lot of energy and it'll direct you to where that energy is best spent. So often when we get Mars sextile to Neptune, there is the potential for us to take action on our dreams or take action on our intuition. Intuition is supercharged right now with Neptune on that final degree of Pisces. So if we're listening then we may find that there is something we can do, Mars, to really secure ourselves for the future. So then Mars goes into Gemini. So it's getting out of the sign that it's been finding a little bit of a, a challenge, moves into Gemini, and there is certainly a sense of things speeding up again, because this is generally a fast moving sign. It's an air sign. It's ruled by fleet footed Mercury. So Mars going into Gemini activates the mind. The mind is now the tool. Mars is associated with tools, the things that we use to, to make things work. It's also associated with engines and rockets and all the things that are mechanical. It's your car. Uh, one of the things that we do have to be careful of when Mars goes into Gemini is the tendency to drive too fast and to get really impatient on the roads. You know, there's a potential for road rage, especially when Mars 
meets Jupiter later down the line. But we just have the idea that because Mars is moving into Gemini, we are now changing the way that we approach our goals. We're changing the way that we go after things. And the way that we can achieve what we set out to do to get the win that Mars always wants is via Gemini themes, communication. So we're actively starting a dialogue. We're initiating connection with Mars in Gemini. Mars in Gemini knows that having a discussion, getting people around the table to talk about stuff, this is going to help us to achieve our objectives. There's also the motivation to learn the motivation to read, to think again, to discuss, to get information. The challenge with that is that sometimes the mind can be working so quickly, we can make very impulsive decisions or we can snap in our conversations with others. Because again, Mars is kind of not worried about, um, you know, how he says things. He's just like, do this, do that. And so sometimes that can cause conflict or we can be more reactive to what other people say to us whilst Mars is going through Gemini. On the 21st of July, we will have Eris stationing retrograde. That is going to be until the 11th of January, 2025. So we know that Eris in forward motion, she's always kind of, here is the elephant in the room. I'm just going to disrupt things until you actually deal with the problem. I am not the problem. I am pointing out the problem. That is what Eris is all about. Now in retrograde motion, like any retrograde, this is then internalized. So we're now asked to look at what is this discord within? What is this disharmony within ourselves? This now is what needs to be addressed so that we can be more independent Aries, so that we can uh, free up energy, so that we stop caring so much about what everybody else thinks and actually do what we need to do for ourselves. Not in a selfish way, but just in a way that means you can live your life as, as you would like to live it. We're also going to have the full moon in Capricorn. I mentioned this earlier. So this is the second full moon in Capricorn this year. It's going to be at 29 degrees of Capricorn. So this is a very animated degree. Once again, we have that urgency. And as I mentioned earlier, we're going to have Pluto coming back to this degree as well. So we're getting this whole feeling that some kind of conclusion that we're coming to around this time or big decision that we're coming to around this time is going to be tested by Pluto and it's going to be transformed by Pluto. But it is interesting that we're also going to get that sextile to Neptune there on the anoretic degree of Pisces. So the sextile is once again an invitation for us to feel our way through this. Capricorn is a sign that's very much a realist and I'm only dealing with what I can see in front of me. I don't want to entertain these airy fairy ideas. But now the the connection between the moon and Neptune is saying that it's very important for us to follow our intuition, to allow our intuition to guide the decisions that we're making around this full moon. Again, I will be doing a full analysis of this chart over on my Patreon and also for Substack members. Moving to the 22nd of July, Mars will form a trine to Pluto. It'll also uh, be conjunct Sedna as well. So basically Mars is going to activate that Pluto Sedna trine that I was talking about before. So it might be interesting just to pay attention to what comes up in the news around this time, what stories are being talked about, particularly when it comes to anything that is involving how we communicate with one another. It might be, you know, big news stories that are about the state of journalism or about the state of the media. There also might be a lot of conversation about elections 
questions because uh, Aquarius can be associated with politics as well. So, so I'm just kind of feeling that there's going to be a lot of maybe heated discussions around these matters that could be divisive, but at the same time, there is a way for us to find a way to connect. If we transform the way that we are thinking about things, if we allow ourselves to see the other side, then maybe we can forge really powerful, really strong links with one another, with Mars trying to Pluto. This is also the date that the sun is going to enter Leo again, 22nd of July. So now the sun is in its own sign, happy to be there. So we now get an extra shot of this powerful Leo energy. We're once again speaking about Leo themes. This is creative self-expression, children, dating, drama, fun, royalty, actors. And when the sun goes into Leo, it says, what role are you playing here? Who are you? Who do you want to be? What part are you playing in life? It can elevate our sense of self. Sometimes it can elevate the ego. There can be issues with pride when the sun goes into Leo. And if we are too proud to admit when we're wrong and too proud to admit, you know, when we need help, all these kinds of things, this can be the downside to the Leo energy. But positively, the question about our sense of purpose and our sense of self, all of this is being illuminated as the sun goes into Leo and we might get some more clarity. We might get almost like the the light shining upon us, sort of saying, this is who I am. Actually, I'm kind of really starting to realise maybe I've been playing a part that wasn't me and now I feel like I can be myself. The encouragement to be true to yourself, to be true to your heart is powerful when the sun goes into Leo. On the 23rd of July, I wanted to point out an interesting background transit, which is going to be an asteroid called Make Make, and she's going to be conjunct the south node. She's actually a dwarf planet. So I, I use the word asteroid, but she's technically a dwarf planet. Um, she's a trans-Neptunian. She has a, a very long orbit. It's 306 and a little bit years. So kind of not far off um, Pluto. She's actually got a longer orbit than Pluto. So Make Make is once again another of these bodies that is associated with the collective, collective movements. Now, she first started moving through Libra in October of uh, 2013, and she will fully leave Libra in 2046. She'll start to leave Libra in 2044, but she won't fully leave Libra and enter Scorpio until 2046. So in other words, we're having a long period of time with Make Make in Libra. So this dwarf planet was discovered in um, 2005, March the 31st, 2005. So we've only been dealing with her energy and aware of this level of consciousness since 2005. Once a planet is named or a body is named, that is when it comes into consciousness. When you give something a name, it's like it's ensouled, it's given a spirit, life. A name is life. So Makomak is discovered. It happens to be near Easter. So she's nicknamed the Easter Bunny. And eventually she is given the name Makomake, which is um, the creation god of um, the, the culture that's connected with Easter Island. So it's kind of interesting that we have some stories about rebirth, resurrection and rebirth with Makomake because of the connection with uh, Easter and Easter Island, and then this idea of creation. So I'm getting sort of a sense of creation and recreation, but also Make Make can be connected to the idea of sustainability. And in fact, even our sort of global issues with how we are using the, the planet, because the original inhabitants eventually kind of cut down all of the trees on the island, which kind of meant that it was non-sustainable 
tangible. In a way, it's almost like they were very successful in their culture, in their civilization. But then there was this kind of overuse problem. And then they also had problems with people coming from other places and taking over and fighting them for their resources and all of this kind of stuff as well. It's got a very long history. But of course, we have the the great big heads that are left on the island, the very enigmatic statues that stare out to sea that seem as though they they have so much knowledge. There is a feeling that the original culture of this island had so much advanced knowledge in many ways. So my feeling is that Make Make kind of brings in all of these themes. And in Libra, it's like, you know, we're trying to work together to stop the potential destruction, cutting down all of our trees, getting rid of our rainforest, you know, all of those kinds of things, trying to find agreements to work together to stop this issue, to work together to resurrect, to recreate. But then the connection to the South Node means that we also currently now have to look at what agreements or contracts or partnerships must be released so that we can regrow, recreate, resurrect, bring things back to life. What needs to be let go of here? So something needs to be released with Make Make coming into a conjunction with the South Node. And like I say, this is much more of a a theme that is for the collective rather than us uh, on a personal level. Although if you do have anything around eight, nine degrees of Libra, Aries, Cancer or Capricorn, then you might just get a little bit of an impression of this energy coming through these stories. The actual conjunction will be at eight degrees and 56 minutes of the sign Libra. On the 25th of July, Mercury is going to enter home sign Virgo. But once again, we need to remember that Mercury is going to station in this sign. So we're not going to see the full transit just yet. So Mercury goes into Virgo, still in the shadow zone of the upcoming retrograde. So we're still having to bear in mind that there are things that we're going to come back to because Mercury is going to revisit this zero degrees of uh, Virgo. So Mercury going into Virgo means that the mind is now thinking about topics that are associated with Virgo. So generally, we're thinking in more practical ways. Virgo is uber practical. It likes to be very organized. So we're thinking about how can I organize things? How can I help? And how can I make things better? These are the thoughts that we get preoccupied with when Mercury goes into Virgo. We also tend to be much more aware of the details, which can be excellent because, you know, a lot of the time we can skate past those details, especially with Jupiter being in Gemini at the moment. So this is helpful. We're starting to break things into little pieces and examining them. And that's going to be even more a process when Mercury stations retrograde in Virgo as well. So one of the things that we can do around this time is to just make a note of the things that are wrong, the things that we'd like to fix, the things that we'd like to change, ways that we could be more efficient. This is exactly the kind of things that we're going to be dealing with, with Mercury being in Virgo. Now, again, this story of healing and how to fix things is going to be echoed by Chiron stationing retrograde. This is on the 26th of July. So Chiron is going to station at 23 degrees and 32 minutes of the sign Aries. So if you have any planets or points around this degree in Aries, Libra, Cancer or Capricorn in particular, then you're going to be feeling this station more. So Chiron retrograde in Aries is going to draw us inwards to address any wounds that stop us from feeling motivated, that de-energize us, that stop us from being assertive, that stop us feeling as though we can take any kind of independent action, that stop us feeling like we can achieve our goals. Now Chiron says, 
you have some wounds inside that need to be tended to. You need to stop putting just a sticking plaster on it and actually deal with what is this pain that's going on inside of me? And so for some people, of course, it might be a physical thing. For other people, it's more about emotional stuff. All of us, in some way, shape or form, have been hurt in life in many different ways. But we're now specifically looking at what is stopping you from being here and and kind of feeling that you belong here, the, the right to, to live. Um, this is Aries. So as Chiron stations retrograde, we're likely to start to feel a little bit of sensitivity to whatever it is, where we've been wounded, where we've been hurt. We might feel as though we're lacking in strength, again, physically or emotionally. We're lacking in strength. This is where I have a weak point and it needs working on. So there's a vulnerability there that Chiron stationing retrograde is just going to start to tap into. And like I said, I think this can work quite well with Mercury going into Virgo, who is very busy thinking about how can I make things better? So we get this combination of influences. It's really going to turn us into thinking about solutions. Again, because Mercury is in Virgo, the practical. It's all about the practical. What can I do practically to make this better? Chiron will be in a retrograde motion right up until December the 29th, so pretty much for the rest of this year. So this brings me to the end of this recording. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please do click a like and subscribe. I will also drop all of my links below for my website, for social media, for my Patreon and also Substack. I will see you again soon. And in the meantime, I wish you many blessings on your path.